Hello, my name is Tyler Knight, and after attending all the public lectures this semester, the one I found most interesting was the Physics for Breakfast lecture by Peter Yonker. Peter started out this lecture by introducing how physics is all around us, and went on to explain how he pro can prove that in coffee, eggs, and cereal, which are everyday breakfast foods for most people. So he went on to ask us what happens when you spill coffee, and introduced the idea that Coffee forms a ring-shaped stain where the edges are darker than the, in the middle of the stain. So then he went on to claim this is the coffee ring effect, which explains, which he explained happens for any dissolved liquid, which like tea. So <clears throat> Peter went on to tell us that co what coffee really is, which is just oils or small molecules that have been dissolved through a filter from the coffee bean and dropped into water. But that didn't really make any sense because I thought oil and water don't mix, but apparently the oils from coffee are water soluble, so that doesn't cause a problem. So then he wanted to explain his model of coffee experiment, which he which involved water and these colloidal particles that are solid spheres and are so small that 90 million of them lined up in a straight line are about the size of a football field. These particles were suspended in water like uh, they were supposed to be emulating coffee and they are small but they can still be seen by an easy basic microscope and he conducted an experiment where he dropped a drop of this liquid on a slide and let it dry and while it was drying he was watching it under a microscope and he found that the edges of the drop become darker and darker the longer that it sits there the particles move to the edges and th then he asked himself why this happens and he found that the answer kind of lied in surface tension where molecules are cohesive which means that they are attracted to each other and so the more molecules that move to the edges those mo molecules want to be surrounded by more and more of the molecules so more and more molecules move from the middle to the edges and so then he went on to explain that surface tension tries to counteract surface area which means that surface tension does not want the air the surface area or the size of the drop to gain any size so it minimizes it and adhesion plus cohesion means that there's a spherical cap that's formed on the surface of the liquid so then peter found out that the edges of the drop actually get pinned to the ground during evaporation so they don't close in as the water evaporates they stay where they're put and the the diameter of the drop basically stays the same size as it does as it evaporates and um, this is because the fluid flows from the middle of the drop to the edges so the edges are the last thing to dry and that proved why the coffee ring forms so then he wanted to introduce scrambled eggs and asked us the question why do eggs harden when water is evaporated from them and he led to introducing this universal testing machine or UTM which he also asked are scrambled eggs really solid and are raw eggs really liquid? So he went about me uh, conducting an experiment by measuring the force necessary to push the amount of solid or liquid um, and, and how much it moved and he measured it with great precision. And so his first test was the UTM creep test where the test, uh, it tests the force it took to push something down and he found that pushing down on a liquid is actually much harder than a solid which I had never heard of that before. And when he pushed down on the solid scrambled eggs, that he noticed that when he pushed down and then they went down, and when he pushed back, like when he moved, removed the, the force, they went right back into where they originally were sitting, which means scrambled eggs are elastic. And so he goes on to explain that eggs are made up of protein suspension, and that protein makes up all our cells, and that they are in chains, and that some pro patches of these protein chains are hydrophilic which means they like water and some are hydrophobic which means they dislike water and this causes them to fold into a new structure where these particles group together according to if they like or dislike water and they make up a different shape when heated and these protein chains are similar to velcro and when they are heated this velcro opens and they denature and they start to unfold these chains and they, different pieces of these chains start to stick together, but they form a totally different shape, which is why raw eggs and scrambled eggs are totally different shapes. From this, Peter gave us some tips on how to make good eggs, which basically was don't heat your eggs higher than the boiling or the temperature for water to boil, or they're going to be extremely dry, and nobody likes dry eggs. So then he went on to introduce Cheerios, and 
point out that when Cheerios are dumped into milk, for instance, that they end, end up clumping together. And I had also noticed this eating cereal before, but I never really thought twice about it. So he went on to explain that in liquid, uh, adhesion creates a meniscus, like when you are using an undergraduated cylinder. They, um, these Cheerios also create a meniscus because they are less dense than milk, so they want to get as high on the milk as possible. And this leads to the Cheerio effect, which is where one Cheerio's meniscus climbs up another Cheerio's meniscus, and that causes their ends to touch. And this is because they both want to get up to a higher point, and this is also applicable to multiple Cheerios, not just two. So. When he also did this with another material that is less dense than water, uh, than milk, that like paper clips, the same thing happened. So, what he went on to say was that coffee ring is a problem in many systems like uh, printing or uh, painting, and that this coffee ring effect is being used for testing in malaria and Alzheimer's because that has to do with protein chains. And so, from this, an idea that I found very interesting was how the coffee ring effect affects how we print and uh, paint certain things. So I went on to look up some information about this and uh, apparently there are some researchers in California that have made a key advance in efforts to eliminate this drop by drop um, nature of ink which causes some coffee ring effect to occur in some printed out items. And they developed a new method for producing straighter uniform circuits using inkjet printing and this development includes the feasibility and tuning of, of optimizing inkjet technology for microelectric applications. So basically they were able to use this inkjet technology to print finer, straighter lines and eliminate these inkjet problems with coffee rings. So that's basically all I was able to find about it, that, about something I thought was interesting from the lecture. Thank you.